Today we're going to talk about layers, layer files, and group layers and how they differ. Spatial data that's brought into ArcGIS comes in and is referred to as layers. And here we have the table of contents over here on the left showing multiple layers, a, a county layer, a town layer, some boundary layers and roads and so forth. Layers can represent vector data such as roads and polygons and it can also represent image data such as in this case USGS topographic scans scans of uh, analog maps and other imagery. We refer to them as layers because they are not individual data sets they are views or thematic representations of your data. A layer or number of layers can represent different information extracted from the attribute table of any particular data set. So let's take a look at, at what I mean by that. If we look at this census block data, this is what the layer looks like. It's displayed currently unfilled and as a single color. If we look at the attribute table, and we notice that in the attribute table there are a number of fields, some of which such as population, um, different uh, ethnic backgrounds, there's fields for different age groups, cohorts, as collected from the USGS census. These are block groups. From this data set, we can create multiple layers that take this data, the attribute information, and map it. And that's what I've done right below here. I have a layer called seniors and I click on that and these are the block groups using the senior field and mapping that information out into five different categories. It's very easy to grab this data and do another layer. You can grab census block and you can copy a layer so I'm here I'm going to copy it and I can paste it back into any data frame in this particular case I only have one data frame so I will paste it back into there by right clicking on data frame and choosing the paste option. The census blocks get copied. I'm going to move it down, click and drag it down and put it right here and map it using a different field. So it's very simple. I bring up the layer properties by double clicking on the name. I click on quantities under the show box and I want to map it by, in this case I had seniors earlier so let's use those in the 5 to 17 range. We can think of those as uh, school age and assign it a 5 class natural breaks. It's the same classification used in the others and say OK. And I can change the name and, and instead of census blocks call it school age. And in that way I, can, I now have two layers school age and seniors both of which are accessing the da same data set set from census blocks and displaying it differently using the different attributes attached to those individual blocks. That's why these layers are depiction of the data set using whatever attributes you assign. So it's very important to realize that layers are not something on your hard drive. They exist within your map document and you can copy and paste from one data frame to another data frame within the same map document but they don't exist outside the map document. I'm going to show you another layer. So I bring up our soil layer for the same township and in the soil layer we might like to map things if we open up the map the uh, layer properties for the soil layer and perhaps we want to map by a certain category of soil attribute and we look look down through these attributes. Now some of them I have built some aliases for a couple uh, such as drainage class. So I click on drainage class and I say uh, add all values and I have all values and I can of course adjust my color ramp if I don't like that and rearrange these things go through and create a legend that exactly the way I've wanted it because if I do this just take some of my defaults I get something that's not very intuitive and as you can see drainage class and moderately well drained poorly drained somewhat excessively well drained and so forth I might want to reorder those it might be more useful to have colors that, that sort of imply things um, and so I've done that here 
in this layer for soils. And I, if I expand out the legend while that's drawing, you can see that um, there's my soil classification. And I've given some better um, colors associated with them and reordered ordered them so that we have somewhat excessively drained soils at the top going down through well all the way down till we get very poorly drained and unclassified at the bottom. So now this is still a layer just like the school age and seniors layers were for the census data. Their next step might be do you really want to go through this hassle every time of creating this legend and doing the reordering and getting the colors? No. There's a simple way of avoiding that and it's called creating a layer file. The way you create a layer file is to simply click on soils, click on your layer name and down towards the bottom in the context menu is save as layer file. Now and we can it will default to saying soils.layer and we might want to be a little bit more descriptive and, and, and label that as drainage. Soil drainage dot layer. Layer files have dot LYR extensions and when you save them they actually create a file on your hard drive and that file can be opened up in another map document and what happens when you do that let's just throw this soils away and let's add in our soils layer and within our directory here we have a new icon and we have soils drainage layer. We add that and puts it in, pl in place here but notice it has the legend exactly the way I had it. It has all the naming. It also has the data. Saving something out to a layer file retains the information as to how the layer is displayed, the legend associated with that layer, and in any special things you've done with the legend such as reordered it and things like that. Okay, so let's turn that off. Now, the last thing I want to mention is something called a group layer. So you now know what a layer is. We know we can write out the information to a layer file. What's a group layer? Well, a group layer is a layer in which you can put multiple pieces into it, other layers, and then manipulate them all together. And one example is something sometimes used for imagery. So in this case, I can come right down and I can turn on something called this USGS Topo Scan Layers. What these are, if I zoom into a little area, you can see that it is a topographic map that has been scanned and put into the system and it is actually an image. Now there are many many images that make up this complete layer file. Let me zoom to layer. The layer looks like this and if I expand out the layer, the group layer, you can see all these individual images, TIFF files, that make up this group layer and I can individually turn them on and off and you can see these these pieces these blocks here that represent the images I'm turning on and off this is a group layer they've been all put together under this umbrella and it allows me to turn them all off and on at once and there are some other manipulations I can do I can look at properties for the group layer and I can change its brightness, its contrast, its transparency. Uh, I can put pieces in and take pieces out and, and change symbolization and things like that. And I can also affect the scale at which they're displayed. Makes it very nice to manage multiple pieces like this. And there's one other <clears throat> thing I'd like to show that you could do with a group layer. And that is that you can you can make your own group layer very easily by going up to the data frame, right click on it, say new group layer. And some things something that people like to do with a group layer is to make a base map. So you can make a base map layer that has the information in it that you need all the time. Here we created a base map group layer. To put things into it, you can just click and drag them up into it. And that becomes part of the base map layer. I've added my roads. I can also add my tax parcels if I want them in my base map. And perhaps <clears throat> I might like township boundaries into my base map. Whatever you like. 
and we can turn these on individually or we can manage them in total because they are now a group layer and once you've done something like that and click this off you could save it out just like any other layer file save as a layer file call it base map perhaps and then any time you need a, your specific base map in any of your map documents, it's easy to add. You simply add it as any other data layer, base map, add. And we have all the information in there. So this is a really handy use of a group layer. So now we know individual layers within our table of contents, access the data, display it in different ways. Save it out as a layer file if you want to retain your symbology. Create a group layer if you want to group multiple pieces together whether they be images or whether they be multiple layers and then save that out as a layer file that you can use elsewhere.